Satisfaction guaranteed. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most satisfying movie moments. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. For this list, we're going over the moments from film that brought everything full circle, resolved everything perfectly, or those that just feel the best to watch in the moment. Naturally, because we will be dealing with plot important events, spoilers will appear throughout. Say hello to my little friend! Number 20. Godzilla's Atomic Kiss of Death – Godzilla <laughs> Although some complained about the sparsity of Godzilla moments in this 2014 reboot, less is more in this case. The gradual build-up to the reveal of the King of the Monsters makes his time on screen that much sweeter. Similarly, it makes his biggest standout moments all the more satisfying. When battling the Mutos in San Francisco, Godzilla unleashes his atomic breath only a few times, the first with a fantastic build-up to it. However, the moment that makes our list occurs when the gigantic reptile at last destroys one of the opposing monsters by forcing open its mouth and breathing white-hot death down its throat. Amazing. Number 19. Maximus Kills Commodus – Gladiator Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Maximus Decimus Meridius – yes, we have to say the whole thing – is a Roman general betrayed by Commodus, the despicable son of the emperor, who has Maximus's whole family killed. Forced into slavery as a gladiator, Maximus works his way up to confronting Commodus and eventually goes into battle in the arena with his foe. However, despite stabbing Maximus beforehand, Maximus still manages to win. This victory is so satisfying not only because the former general finally achieves his revenge, but also because Commodus is just so dang hateable. And seeing Maximus reunite with his wife and son in the afterlife gets us choked up every time. Number 18. Woody Gets Fixed Up – Toy Story 2 After Woody is stolen by a greedy collector named Al, the toy cowboy is brought to Al's apartment, where he encounters other toys from the property he's based on. Wow. Al also accidentally tears Woody's arm, which was fraying, necessitating a repair. Al calls in an elderly specialist in toy repair, who proceeds to fix Woody and make him as good as new. The repairman's intricate case and his deft movements in fixing Woody up are strangely enjoyable, and seeing the battered toy looking renewed brings some color to our cheeks, too. Number 17. The Heist Ends – Ocean's Eleven This is where it gets tricky. The elevator won't move without authorized fingerprint identification. Which we can't fake. And vocal confirmation from both the security system within the Bellagio and the vault below. Which we won't get. There are a lot of heist movies out there, but Ocean's Eleven is something special. The planning and execution of the heist are incredibly slick and funny. Well, did you check the batteries? No. You lose focus in this game for one second. I know, somebody gets hurt. I don't hear Yen complaining. Yet when everything appears to go wrong, it hits that much harder. Naturally, in turn, when it's revealed that they've pulled it off after all, duping the villain and making off with his money under the guise of being a SWAT response, it had us giddy that they got away with it. It was staged. Somebody made a duplicate of my vault. And what we saw on the monitor wasn't actually happening. I don't understand. What happened to all that money? Seeing them all
all go their separate ways at the fountain gives us and Ocean's Eleven pride and a job well done. Number 16, Truman Escapes, The Truman Show. Truman Burbank has lived his entire life inside a reality TV show based around him. You ever think about that, Marlon? Like your whole life has been building towards something? His gradual realization of this truth leads him to face his fear of water and attempt to sail away. However, he reaches a wall with a door in it. It's here that the show's creator speaks to him like the voice of God, trying to convince him to stay. However, Truman replies with his catchphrase, gives a bow, and departs for freedom. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. The audience watching him cheers him on, and we do too. Just watching Truman leave his existential prison after a few hours is satisfying, so we can only imagine what it would be like after watching him for years. <laughs> Number 15, Chiron's Revenge, Moonlight. Where am I supposed to get money from? To a reason I ain't give you nothing. Uh-huh. You know, play, play, mama, and put something in your head. Give me that damn money, Chiron. Chiron is a young man who has a rough upbringing, to put it mildly. Not only does he have to contend with his drug addicted mother pushing him around, he also faces bullying at school because of his homosexuality. Now, I ain't with that gay shit, but if you fuck with me, I'll get your ass more than you can handle how you run into your crackhead ass mom. After his best friend is pressured into participating in bullying him, Chiron later goes to school and takes a chair to the bully responsible. Although this is the beginning of a darker path for Chiron, seeing him stand up for himself at last after taking so much abuse for just being who he is is still gratifying. All right, all right, people, stay focused. Number 14, Rudy Gets to Play, Rudy. This film follows the true story of Daniel Rudy Rudiger, a young man whose lifelong dream was to play football for the University of Notre Dame. Is this just for your father? No. No, it's for everybody who told me that being a Notre Dame football player would be impossible. However, Rudy faces an uphill battle, from his lack of money to his small physique. And despite making the team, he still doesn't get a chance to play during an actual game. Eventually, in the season's final game, the team is up enough and the crowd is so vocally supportive that Rudy gets his chance to play, managing to make a tackle and being carried off the field in triumph. If you aren't cheering Rudy, Rudy, Rudy by the movie's end, you should probably check your pulse because you might be a robot. Number 13, Chris is hired, The Pursuit of Happiness. It was the 25th of September. I remember that day, because that's the day that I found out there was only $21.33 left in my bank account. I was broke. Chris Gardner is a struggling salesman and a single father. An internship at a brokerage firm has the potential to turn his life around, but troubles with the IRS lead to his being evicted and, without funds, leaving him and his son homeless. However, Chris maintains his dogged pursuit of his internship in spite of these hardships, using creative approaches to achieve success. Hey. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. In one of the final scenes, he's called into what he thinks is his final interview and is told he's been hired full time, at last providing security for the two gardeners. We're not crying, we swear. Because tomorrow's going to be your first day. If you'd like to work here as a broker. Would you like that, Chris? Yes, sir. Good. We couldn't be happier. So. Welcome. Was it as easy as it looked? No, sir. No, no, sir, it wasn't. Number 12, but they'll never take our freedom. Braveheart. Now is our chance, now. If we join, we can win. If we win, well, then we'll have what none of us have ever had before. A country of our own. 
When the Scottish army that's gathered at Stirling finds themselves outnumbered nearly three to one, the nobility is ready to negotiate, and the soldiers are ready to go home. But the arrival of rebel William Wallace changes all that. Already a legend in the eyes of many, he rallies the men with an inspiring speech, asking whether they'll regret not fighting that day in many years' time under the yoke of the English. Sons of Scotland, I am William Wallace. William Wallace is seven feet tall. Yes, I've heard. He kills men by the hundred. And if he were here, he'd consume the English with fireballs from his eyes and bolts of lightning from his arse. He concludes with this immortal line and proceeds to lead them on to victory. That they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! There are many stirring battle speeches, and this one speaks to our souls the most. Freedom! Number 11. Arthur Fleck Becomes the Joker Joker Throughout this comic book origin story, Arthur Fleck has a rough go of it. He loses his job, gets beaten up multiple times, and gets several heartbreaking revelations about his origins. <laughs> <laughs> and through it all, he can't help but laugh, even when he wants to cry. But once he embraces the madness that his life has become, it's strangely satisfying for him and the audience. The sky's clear and everything seems to be going his way. Sure, his actions lead to a citywide riot, but as he stands atop a police car painting a bloody smile on his face, we kind of want to smile with him. Number 10. Prepare to Die, The Princess Bride Without a word, the six-fingered man slash him through the heart. I love my father. So naturally, I challenge his murderer to a duel. I fight. Inigo Montoya is a master swordsman whose father made a sword for a six-fingered man. When the extra-digited client attempted to short his father on the price, Inigo's dad refused to hand it over, leading to his murder. Inigo has trained for decades to become skilled enough with a blade to defeat his hated rival, all the while planning exactly what he would say to the man who killed his father. He gets his chance at last when he meets Count Rugen, the man with six fingers, again. Hello! My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. What follows is an epic duel in which Inigo repeats his mantra of revenge. And when he has Rugen at his mercy begging for his life, Inigo tells him he wants his father back before exacting his revenge. We were not prepared for how awesome this moment is. Anything you want. I want my father back, you son of a bitch. Number 9. What happens at the cinema in Glorious Bastards? <laughs> As perversely satisfying as the alternate history fight at the end of director Quentin Tarantino's other film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is, or the eventual comeuppance of Nazi Jew hunter Hans Landa in this movie is, there's just no beating the death of one of the most hated men in history. Fabelhaft, mein Lieber, fabelhaft. Das ist ihr bester Film this year. Inglorious Bastards follows two separate plots to kill the Nazi leadership at a film premiere. Our expectation is that they'll both fail, given that history played out differently. However, the surprise of seeing the bastards burst in on Adolf Hitler's balcony during a fire and gun him down until there's almost nothing left of the mass murderer is matched only by how enjoyable it is to see it happen. Number 8. George Punches Biff – Back to the Future I needed that car no more like that. I mean, do you have any idea how important this was to me? Do you have any clue? I know, and all I can say is I'm… I'm sorry. George McFly is a weak-willed pushover of a man when we first meet him. Both in 1985 and in 1955, George is walked all over by Biff Tannen, whose bullying may not be the most creative, but it still keeps George under heel and leads his son Marty not to respect him. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Oh. Uh, think McFly? Oh. However, Marty's trip to the past gives George a friend, 
and also inspires him to stand up to his bully when Biff attempts to assault his future wife. Watching George knock Biff out is one of the best and most fist-pumping scenes where a bully gets what's coming to them. Take that, butthead. <laughs> Number 7. The Verbal Twist – The Usual Suspects The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. This crime movie is largely told by physically disabled con artist Verbal Kint, who recounts the events that led him and his compatriots to a drug deal gone wrong, of which Verbal and a badly burned man are the only survivors. Verbal's story involves him and his gang being hired by the mysterious Kaiser Soze, a legendary criminal. Soze looks over the faces of his family. Then he showed these men of Will what Will really was. Although the police conclude that Soze was the gang's leader, the detective Dave Kuyan notices certain details in Verbal's story in words scattered around his own office, revealing Verbal was lying. There was a lawyer. What lawyer, Verbal? I am Mr. Kobayashi. 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 Tell me every last detail. I work for Kaiser Soze. Convince Verbal. me. Convince me. The survivor's description also reveals that Verbal is Kaiser Soze. Like any good puzzle, once you realize how everything fits together, the experience is a rush, and this is one of the greatest. After that, my guess is you'll never hear from him again. Number 6. Smile, Jaws When a seaside community swimmers are menaced by a huge great white shark, three men set out to hunt down the fish. You're gonna need a bigger boat. The trio encounters plenty of difficulty in killing the beast, not the least of which is the fact that one of them ends up being eaten by it. But with their boat sinking, the last man standing, Brody, armed with a spear and a gun, faces the shark alone. After jamming a scuba tank in its mouth and stabbing it, Brody manages to fire at the tank, blowing it and the shark into pieces, and causing him to burst into ecstatic laughter at his foe being vanquished. It's a thrilling sequence, and the crescendo of the whole film. Fire, you son of a <laughs> Number 5. Off into the Sunset – Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade Although there are plenty of gratifying moments in this adventure franchise, such as Indy cutting the rope bridge in Temple of Doom, there's just something extra rewarding about a good ending. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade sees Indy and his father battle Nazis in a race to find the Holy Grail. nearly dying in pursuit of the Grail, Indy and his father, as well as their friends, make it out of the Grail's resting place alive and a little wiser. You have chosen wisely. After some hilarious revelations about Indiana's name, the quartet rides off into the sunset towards further adventure, as that iconic theme plays. With an ending as perfect as this, is it any wonder people were upset when they made more movies? Number 4. The Ring is Destroyed – The Lord of the Rings – The Return of the King What are you waiting for? Just let it go! Frodo and Sam have reached Mount Doom, and rather than destroy it as intended, Frodo gives in to temptation and puts the ring on, even as the last of the heroes mount an attack to give him the chance to drop it into the fires. Strangely, the world is saved when the sneaky and pathetic Gollum bites off Frodo's finger and falls to his death with the ring, destroying Sauron once and for all and bringing his forces to their knees. These epic fantasy films are truly massive, so there are plenty of great moments throughout, but the nine or so hours they comprise all lead up to this moment, which helps make it one of the most cathartic ever. Number 3. Avengers Assemble – Avengers Endgame While it was tempting to discuss Iron Man's snap heard around the world from the same film, this moment a little earlier in the movie was much more satisfying. What did you do? <laughs> After Thanos has come to the future and beaten several of the remaining Avengers in battle, only Captain America is left standing against him and his armies. However, a call from Cap's friend Sam heralds not only his return, but also many of the other characters killed by Thanos with his snap years earlier. 
Seeing all of the MCU's heroes in one place is fantastic, and the cherry on top is Cap finally saying that iconic line. Avengers! Assemble. No matter how many times we see it, we still get chills. Number 2. The Death Star Blows Up Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope They're tracking us. Not this ship, sister. It may have been the movie that started the whole Star Wars franchise, but this film also contains one of the sci-fi fantasy franchise's most enjoyable moments. Sure, there are plenty of others, Vader tearing through a hallway of rebel soldiers for one, but this one set the bar. The final battle at the Death Star sees a ragtag fleet of pilots making a trench run in an attempt to blow up the huge superweapon. The tension builds masterfully, and Luke lets himself go to the Force, until he makes that fateful shot that destroys the massive battle station. Use the Force, Luke. Let go. Basically, this is a great movie moment. One in a million. These really are satisfying movie moments. I'm sitting here like, yes, after every one. Our number one actually comes from a movie that was a box office disappointment, but has since become very popular. It's a symbolic moment about figuratively and literally crawling through the trenches to emerge victorious. And it was written by my favorite author, and if that doesn't give it away, I don't know what will. So let's cheer our way through the honorable mentions, and then we'll name our most satisfying movie moment. <laughs> I gotta check some. Oh. Stay. Stay. They're gone. They're all gone. I was being metaphorical. It's a terrible philosophy. I've gone where the universe takes me my whole life. It's better to make those decisions for yourself. Continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Andy Escapes – The Shawshank Redemption Get busy living, or get busy dying. Andy Dufresne is a possibly innocent man in prison for killing his wife and her lover. Over 20 years, Andy suffers many trials in prison, from assaults by fellow inmates to being used to launder money for the warden. He maintains hope through things like his friendship with fellow inmate Red, his passion for rocks, and his pinup girl posters. However, near the conclusion, Andy's discovered missing from his cell. It's soon revealed that Andy used a small rock hammer to tunnel out of his cell, which he hid with a poster and crawled through the sewage pipe to freedom during a storm. This scene is like a heist reveal, redemption story, and the sweet release of freedom all rolled into one. It's the ultimate catharsis. Remember, Red, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. I will be hoping that this letter finds you, and finds you well. Your friend, Andy. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. 